uh, schedule that we have for this hackathon. This, just to recap on all the sessions we are going to have uh, till the end of the hackathon, till the submission deadline. And also a recap on the access to Google Cloud credits for those of you who still struggle with credits access or want uh, more credits than they have in their accounts. So when we come to the event schedule that right now we are on the workshop that I just announced, and right after that, we'll have general Q&A session on Discord. So if you will still have some questions on the integration of Llama Index or anything else you want to raise with our mentors, feel free to join the Q&A session on our Discord. That's really important part because you can discuss your product ideas, discuss any struggles you have using TrueERA or Google Cloud Vertex AI product for this hackathon. So stay tuned and just don't miss the session. It can help a lot to improve your product. After that, on December 6th, in two days, we'll have one more general Q&A session that will be focused more on submitting your solutions. So if you have some questions regarding your demo video, uh, the prototype or requirements, feel free to join the session to solve these issues with our mentors. And on December 8th, we will have a submission deadline. Please check out your team profiles and team pages to see uh, how much time is still left for you till the end of the hackathon. When it comes to the Google uh, Cloud Vertex AI access that you have for this hackathon, I'm reminded that you have three options. Option number one is when you're creating your own new account, you got free credits to try out the models. For everybody that got into hackathon team, you, we, uh, we are sending out uh, 30 credits for a Google Cloud Vertex AI that you can utilize for the hackathon. And also you, can, you have an option to use our hackathon service account and access this through your team page. For those that actually reach uh, the limit of credits or have any troubles accessing creating your own account, feel free to just go to your team page, make sure that you are team leader of the team and click to request service account and straight away you will get an email with the connection details. So that's a pretty fast way to get started and to secure your access if you have any troubles creating your own account. And with that, I um, hope you do not have any issues. And if you do, please reach out to mentors, tag our team and mentors uh, via Discord. It will help us to coordinate you and solve the issue better. And now I'm super happy to introduce two amazing speakers that are with me on the stage already and ready to present. We have Shayak San, who is CEO of True Era. And TrueLens is a product True Era that you will be using for the hackathon. And Lori Was, who is the VP of Developer Relations at Llama Index. Super happy to have Lori for the first time at Love Lab. So they will be having a Llama Index and True Era workshop on building and evaluating multi-model generative AI applications, basically the ones that you're building over this hackathon. So stay tuned. Make sure that you're listening to everything. The session will be recorded and make sure to use the session to benefit your hackathon product. I'm happy to invite Laurie Moss to, to talk. Laurie, the stage is yours. Feel free to start. Thanks very much. Hello, everybody, and thank you for the kind introduction. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about multimodal apps. Just to talk about what we're going to talk about for a second, we're going to do uh, a quick introduction to the basis of uh, retrieval augmented generation uh, applications, uh, and then talk about how they differ uh, when we're talking about multimodal return, retrieval augmented generation applications. Uh, then I'm going to quickly introduce Llama Index and what it's about. Uh, we'll talk about Llama Hub and our uh, Create Llama application. Uh, then we will go to uh, some note notebooks uh, and dive into actual use cases of building multimodal apps. First, we're going to do some basic image to image retrieval, uh, and then we'll have uh, a multimodal retrieval demonstration using uh, American Sign Language. Um, then Sarek is. Sure. I'm sorry, guys, for the for the stop in the session of Lori. We just need to quickly fix the technicalities. So we will be back in literally one minute and we'll just continue the session. Luckily, we had only intro. And during this time, I will share with you all the notebooks that we'll be using over the sessions. So you can already open them and try them on. We'll be back in literally one minute. Okay.
We're super grateful for your patience and we're already back. So I'm giving the stage back to Laurie. Great, thank you very much. Uh, so I was just running through the intro. So after we do the uh, uh, multimodal apps in practice, we'll be talking about ASL and then I will hand over to Shaq who will be talking about uh, evaluating a multimodal RAG application using uh, TrueLens, using the same notebook. Uh, and if we have time, we'll also go into a little bonus content on a previous project that we've done using uh, insights into x-rays. Uh, so without further ado, let's talk about uh, RAG, retrieval augmented generation. The basis of all retrieval augmented generation is a property of the way LLMs treat text. Uh, if you send text to an LLM, it encodes it into numbers. Those numbers get put in, uh, those numbers, the space that they can occupy is known as vector space. And so when you are putting these, your words into uh, vector space, we call it embedding into vector space or vector embeddings or just embeddings for short. Uh, the unique property of embeddings is that they encode semantic meaning. So in this example, you can see that I have three phrases and I've added, where did the cat sit? The, the question gets encoded just the same way that the information got encoded. And because the meaning of the cat sat on the mat and where did the cat sit are similar, they get encoded into like similar places within vector space, like they're nearby. And you can use math to find things that are nearby to the text that you're looking, to the question that you're looking for to get the answers that you're looking for. That is the magic of uh, retrieval augmented generation. Uh, so those are the steps in every retrieval augmented generation application. You embed all of your context, you retrieve only the relevant context, and then you take your query and you take your context and you give them both to the LLM and it generates an, and it generates an answer based on the context and the question. Laurie, so, I'm sorry to to you, but I guess your screen share is freezing from time to time. Could you please try to turn it off and turn it on again? Sure. Is that better? Max, just let us know, please, if it's working better now. Perfect, thank you so much. Great. So let me just uh, go back through those quickly, if you can still see them. You embed, you retrieve, and then you generate. This is a schematic demonstration of how that works. You take your query, you send it into embeddings, and they go to a vector database. The vector database retrieves only the relevant context, the query in the context, then go to an LLM again for completion, which then generates the response. So how does a multimodal LLM differ? Well, not very much. It's almost the same con it's almost the same idea. You can embed images just the same way that you can embed text and you can provide images as context to an LLM for your completion. But that's a very simplified version, so let's dive in a little bit more into exactly how that works. This is a exploded version of the previous diagram. So you take your text, that's the green box uh, and you send it into text embeddings. There are specific kinds of embeddings that are good at text, and you send those to your retriever. You send image embeddings the same way, but you don't use the same embedding model. You use uh, an image-specific embedding model like Clip. Those are both sent to a vector database. A vector database is going to have one index of your text and one index of your images. Your retriever then sends your queries to both and retrieves from both. It retrieves text and images, sends those for response genesis, sorry, synthesis, uh, and then you get your response in both text and images. The demonstration here is with images. You can do this with audio as well. So every RAG application has five essential stages. You have to load your data into your application, that is, get it into the vector database in the first place. You have to index it so that your vector database does the embeddings. You have to store your embeddings so that you can then query them. Uh, your queries are when you retrieve stuff out of your database and send them to the LLM. And the, the final stage, which we're gonna be talking about more today, is evaluation. 
if you make changes to your application, you have to use evaluation to make to figure out whether or not the change that you've made has been beneficial. Beneficial? Have you made your application better or worse by changing some aspect of loading, indexing, storing, or querying? So evaluation is key, and it can be very tricky uh, to get right in a complex uh, and subtle world of LLMs. So let me talk about Llama Index for a second. This is the famous five line starter uh, that you use for any Llama Index application. The second line there you can see is where we're loading the documents. That's the loading stage. We are just in this case, pulling documents directly from the file system uh, into uh, Python. The second stage is the indexing. We are taking those documents and we're indexing them and putting them into a vector store. In this case, the vector store is in memory. The query engine provides you with a query engine that you can with a way to query uh, the documents that are now indexed in the vector store. And then finally, you can run your queries. In the example that I just showed, we are loading data from uh, just your local directory. That is very useful for demonstrations. It's very useful for testing. It's not a very real world example. In a real world, uh, you're going to have data that lives all over the place. It's going to be behind APIs. It's going to be on the file system. It's going to be in files of PDFs. It's going to be in JSON data. It's going to be in your Slack. Uh, it's going to be all sorts of places. The way that Llama Index addresses that is a thing called Llama Hub, where we have uh, hundreds of loaders uh, that connect to all sorts of data sources um, that you can then put directly into your application and connect to all of these data sources for doing the loading uh, stage. We also support uh, dozens of different vector databases. So whichever vector database you're trying to index into, we support that as well. Um, if you're thinking about how to get, how do I get this stuff into production, which is something that's always top of mind when you're doing a hackathon, uh, we have a tool called Create Llama. If you've ever used Create React App, uh, it is based on that tool. It is a command line tool that generates uh, a full stack web application for you. It generates a front end and a back end in your choice of JavaScript or Python. Uh, and it allows you to deploy that with one click to a host like Vercel or Render. For a hackathon use case, this is an incredibly useful tool that gets you up and running and allows you to then customize it to what you need it to do. So now let's, now let's dive into our first notebook, uh, which is image to image retrieval, which shows uh, how you can use LLMs to query using an image to retrieve other images. First, obviously we need to install I'm going to assume that you can still see my new screen. Uh, we need to install all of our dependencies. I've rerun, I've run this notebook this morning. It takes a little while to go. So we're just going to be using the already run version of the notebook. You set up your API key. Don't worry, I'm going to delete these API keys as soon as the session is finished. So you can only steal my API key for a couple of minutes. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to download a bunch of uh, related images and text uh, for these five topics from Wikipedia using the uh, Wikipedia package. Uh, you can see that it doesn't like how, how many images I try to get and how quickly I try to get them, but we got enough to be able to demonstrate this. Uh, now let's just simply display them on the screen. You can see the images that we got are on all of these topics. There's BTS, uh, there's the bat car from the Batman page. There's some Van Gogh paintings in there. There's a Tesla. We've got all of the images we need. So now let's uh, look a little bit more closely at what we're doing here, where we're creating uh, the index. So I told you that you can use any, ve any vector store you want. We're gonna be using the Quadrant vector store today. Uh, so we set up the Quadrant client. We set up, like I said, uh, you need uh, two vectors, you need two vector stores for uh, doing multimodal. You need one to index the text and one to index the images. So we're setting up both. You can see the text collection and the image collection. We create a storage context that has both. And then we create the multimodal index. We say, get the images from that Wikipedia page that we just, all those, sorry, Wikipedia text and images that we just downloaded. 
and create a multimodal index based on them. So now let's see what happens when we actually query that notebook. Uh, this is the image we're going to use to run the query. The, we're going to pick just the second image that we got out of our original download. We're going to create a retriever engine, which allows us to do the retrieval. And we're going to say, give me an image that matches this image and then display the images that match. As you can see, when we plot the re retrieved images, we get three Van Gogh paintings similar to the Van Gogh painting, even though our index uh, contained all of these. This is image to image retrieval. It's looking for things that are semantically similar to uh, your search term, even if your search term is itself an image. Of course, GPT-4V can do more than that. Uh, it can look at the images and figure out what they are about. Uh, so in this case, in this uh, section, this is what we're doing. Um, we're taking our images, we're handing it to GPT-4 Vision uh, and asking it to analyze the artistic styles of these images in the context of the first image. So relative, look at these images and tell us about them relative to this image. And it starts uh, talking about the uh, post-impressionism and the styles of Van Gogh. So that's basic image to image retrieval and using GPT-4V to get more context about images than, is, than simply that they are an image. Now let's talk about our second notebook, uh, which is going to be evaluating multimodal RAG. This is where I'm going to uh, hand off to Shayak after we get through the first section. Um, again, install all of our dependencies, set up an API key that you're going to steal, uh, download our libraries, and then download a bunch of images of uh, ASL, of hands basically making shapes of letters is what this data is. Uh, we create our text index and our image index. And we create a multimodal vector index just as we did before. Now we get to uh, the interesting part where we uh, index all of this text and all of these images, uh, the descriptions of the images loaded from GPT-4V, uh, getting it to describe what the hand signs look like. So then we index all of those uh, and build our multimodal RAG system. So in this case, we're creating uh, a template that says, that gives a prompt that says, uh, tell me how to basically do an ASL hand sign that matches the query that I'm trying to make. Uh, we put those templates into our multimodal index in these lines here, uh, and now we can test drive. So uh, we've said, uh, how do I sign the letter R? And it retrieves, and we asked it to retrieve uh, two images and the retrieve position zero, the best match that it found uh, was retrieving the letter R. So this is text going to an image, retrieving a description that was generated about that image and then retrieving the image that matches that description in the index. So that is going from text to image and back to text uh, for true multimodal uh, retrieval. So now I'm going to hand off to Shayak, who's going to talk about uh, how we evaluate those results uh, to make changes to this application and see how it can be improved. Shayak, do you want me to hand off my screen share to you? All right. Thank you so much. Um, can you guys hear me? Yep. Yeah, we do. Awesome. All right. Yeah. Perfect. Thanks for the the the, the walkthrough of how to use Nama Index to really, really easily to create these fairly complex apps. Like so building something like this even a year or a year and a half ago would require like a machine learning PhD. And now the fact that you can do it with OpenAI and 
love my index with just a few lines of code is pretty mind blowing from my perspective. Then the 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 thing that you kind of start to worry about after you've done this is that these models or apps that you build can hallucinate as well. So 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 I, I think one message that uh, I would leave you with, which is related to what we've been discussing about. I can do that. Okay. Can you see my screen? No. Yeah, no, we can see it. All right, perfect. Yeah, so, uh, so, so, your LLMs can hallucinate as well. Uh, I mean that that it was true in the text world, and now it's true in the multi-modal world as well. Uh, in in this in 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 these. Examples, we just have some examples where we don't have exactly the right answer answers that we would want here. So how do we test for hallucinations? Uh, and 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 this goes back to the, the triad that we've been discussing for the last few sessions. You have the query, the context, and the response. And then you want to check if the retrieved context is relevant to the query if the response is supported by the context, and then is the answer relevant. So if you have these three consistency checks in place, you have fairly high confidence that the correctness of your uh, RAG application just depends on the correctness of your data and, and, and the app itself has done its best to check for uh, the fact that it's 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 being helpful, right? So, just uh, if if I were to kind of take take this prior to the multimodal world, context relevance is just is the retrieved image relevant and sufficiently similar to the query image. The the context to response edge is is the response that you created sub supported by the context, and the answer relevance is what you've created is that relevant to the query. So we'll jump back into uh, the 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 ASL app that we had created to to just discuss what it looks like with two lens. Uh, can you see my notebook? And is this enough? Yes. Perfect. So, so in 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 this example, we have built this multi-modal RAG app to 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 help answer questions about American Sign la Language. This this was the example that we were looking at, which is how can I sign an honor? And then, in order to start testing this with and we have to define these things called feedback functions. So what feedback functions are, are these evaluation functions that take your application and instrument it and then run uh, functions which give you a score on how it is doing on different dimensions of correctness. So in this example, I have set up three different feedback functions. One is for groundedness. One is for QA relevance and the other is for context relevance. So, so these three correspond to the ed edges that we had discussed before. And then in order to just start using the Llama index query engines that we had created before, we we just wrap it with this uh with, with this class called two Llama. So recall that we had created two query engines. One uh, just includes the 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 app itself with, with the text. So so there you just in index the 
images by themselves. And then you created a second index, which included both the image and a description of the image, which, which was created by GPT-4V. So, so, so we have two different approaches to the same problem that we can compare and evaluate. So set up both of these, and then I've asked the same question about how to sign a particular letter for all 20, 26 letters of the alphabet, right? So, so in this case, I just go through my app and, and, and test out how well it does in, in each, each of the situations. I run this right before the call, and I, I, I can look at the dashboard that I had created before, uh, and I'll switch very quickly to the dashboard. And this will take just a few seconds to load. Hopefully my, yeah, okay. So, so now you can see kind of compare how well these apps are doing, both in terms of latency and cost, which they're fairly comparable on, but then also on these feedback functions. So the first app, the, the one which just includes the image embed embeddings does a lot worse on context relevance and groundedness. Whereas the one which includes both the apps and the uh, in, in includes both the images and the text embeddings of the descriptions does a lot better. And then we can go in and look at some examples of what, what actually happened in here. So in this example, if I look at uh, a particular record, and, and, and this should take just a few seconds to load as well. And my machine is being a bit slower than I would like it to be. seconds. Uh, if not, we can just look at an existing example. Pretty fresh. the uh, demo gods and I think I think of which which have happens when you're uh, trying to run something live but just re returning to the uh, uh, example what we did was to evaluate uh these these models uh, on these different letters and what we saw that the the app which had uh both the image and the text context did a lot better than if you were just uh and and adding in the images so 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 that's what's going on with this app uh We'll we'll send out this more book and have a discussion. But now that yeah. this has 
you can have just a as as just saying that this gives you a sense of situations when you're not as grounded. Actually, going on is that the app is not answering in in a very reasonable way, and it's it's just saying that it's not being able to answer based on the context that you receive. Right, so so before I close out, I just wanted to share like just one very quick uh, story from a hackathon we did last month. And and essentially we had a hackathon here in this San Francisco Bay Area with uh, Llama Index and, and others. And then one of the winning teams there was this X-Ray Insight team, which essentially built to predict what's wrong with an uh with uh uh with, with with embeddings of these x-ray images and then uh what they were in British show is that with these images you can come up with pretty good diagnosis for what's wrong with a new x-ray image. And since that hack hackathon this team also has raised around five million euros to, to 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 build this kind of an app for you. So that hope hopefully that's a bit of an inspiration on how to uh build a real app and then also how me making sure that it's well tested and ready for prime time can mean that you're building like a real uh product out, out of it. So that's it. I I'll, I'll just uh stop here and hand things back to Alicia. Thank you so much. Thank you for the session. And I'm sure it was helpful for people that will be building with Llama Index. And I'm just reminding that the session will be saved so you can check it with your team together afterwards when the time will be better for you. Uh, let me just ask you guys if you have any questions to this session specifically or anything regarding Llama Index integration into your app. Please let me know and drop the questions in the chat so I will be happy just to address them. If you don't have any, feel free to use the Discord support and we can just quickly help you there with any questions you have. Just a reminder that Llama Index is a recommended technology for this hackathon. You're not obliga obligated to use technology to your for your submission or to be eligible to get a price uh, for this hackathon, but we do recommend it. If you need some framework uh, like Llama Index is providing, we do recommend to use uh, Llama Index just because you will get instant support and also you have educational session. So it's just easier for you to get started if you have somebody that will be with you constantly on Discord supporting your creation. Okay, I don't see any questions. I'm sure that we can close the session right now and then move everything else people will ask in the Discord server. And right now we are starting out the Q&A session on Discord as well. So if you have any questions to the session, feel free to move them to the uh, Q&A and just talk to mentors live. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you for the session. It was a pleasure to meet you here on, mm -hmm. our, uh, on our Twitch. And I'm super glad to meet you all on Discord supporting teams with their building process. Thank you so much. Thank you.